Uh, here we go. Hi, yeah, everybody. Um, it's Mike here, and we got Beckham and Nancy, and we're going to talk about Reeve Whitson's involvement in this big mess, and hopefully yeah. we uncover some stuff that you would have never imagined. So welcome, everybody, and let's get it rolling. Yeah, well, there's um, obviously this is the photograph of Reeve Whitson that's in chaos. And uh, there's obviously the chapter that's in chaos, but there's lots more known about Reeve Whitson than what he said in chaos as well. So that's sort of what we want to talk about tonight. Like it's mentioned in chaos that this guy apparently knew Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski really well. And uh, another interesting thing that I found out is that um, he's mentioned in the trial transcripts because uh, he's the guy, that, it, it says in chaos as well, he rang Sharon Tate's photographer. Uh, the day that she'd been murdered before the maid had even uh, found the bodies yet. So before anyone should have known that, that, that everyone had been murdered in that house, he rang her, her photographer and said, isn't it terrible <clears throat> what happened? So he knew, and everyone says that's because he had the house under surveillance. They were surveilling the house. So that's that's an interesting thing as well, isn't it? And also, yeah, and because, because of his talking to that photographer, this is how he comes up in the trial transcript. But uh, Bugliosi doesn't mention him in Helter Skelter at all. D you know, none, none of that gets mentioned in Helter Skelter, Bugliosi's book. It's like, uh, so he's a, he's a strange character, and they think, yeah, that he was surveilling the house. And so everyone is jumping to the conclusion he's CIA. But he could also be FBI. Or another good good uh, theory that I saw proposed in the comments section on a blog, though, was someone saying, what if he was hired by Abigail Folger's father to watch Abigail Folger? Because she was apparently estranged from her father, but he was concerned about who she was hanging around with. So he might have been a private detective watching Abigail Folger. <clears throat> but he seems to have known Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski too well for that. It's that, you know, he's too close. Well, to that's what, it's, right. That's yeah. where, that's what um, O'Neill's O'Neill interviewed Colonel Tate um, yeah. just for a little bit. And Tate's the one that told him that, um, you know, Whitson was friends with Sebring, Polanski, and Sharon. Yeah. So that came that came from you know Colonel Tate himself in an Colonel interview. Tate, yeah, because he's supposed to have helped Colonel Tate with his investigation as well, isn't he? Because Colonel Tate uh, did his own right. private investigation into the murders, didn't he? And Reeve yeah, just, supposed to yeah, help with that. right. Just yeah, because remember, just because he was he was Air Force intelligence had done put him in the case in the middle of it. He had to yeah, yeah. he had to himself work around everything going on and figure, try to figure out who did what himself and yeah. probably came across Whitson being around but uh, Bugliosi because according to chaos, um, you know, Whitson strong armed. What was his name? How did, how did, how did Atami. How did he yeah, the photographer, the photographer Atami, yeah. yeah. With a 45 and told him that he was going to do as instructed by bugs or they were going to send him back to, I want to say Iran or some Middle East country that he was from. Yeah. So, um, also one of the, one of the lead, one of the first and lead detectives into the, into the case also confirmed, um, here I had read this earlier that, um, you know, Whitson was around. He was helping with the investigation, and uh, you know his CIA background seemed to fit with everything that he that he was connected to. Um, so, not only do you have this guy, this mystery figure, working with bugs, Colonel Tate, Colonel Tate vouches for him. No, tells you know tells O'Neill that he um, he knows. Um, Polanski and two of the victims very well, but a lead detective um, what was that? also yeah that's on this blog here website yeah um, confirmed his um, his CIA ties well you know it sounded you know plausible it sounded real you know realistic um there we go 
Yeah, Mike began the LAP, uh, LAP detective. On this, yeah, on that block, that's what was it says uh, that. certain. He McGann was certain that Whitson was in on the CIA and found him very, very credible. This Whitson was the one who coerced to tell me to cooperate with Berliosi during the investigation. He threatened mm -hmm. to tell me with deportation back to Iran if he did not cooperate. Yep. It was not only helped Berliosi, okay. but he also gave much help to Paul Tate during his private investigation of his daughter's death. And McCann said that, um, you know, this guy didn't, this guy had. This guy had money to work with. He didn't. He never needed any money to do any sort of um, investigation. You know, if he needed to fly somewhere, or he never needed any, any of the you know extra cash or money to be able to um, facilitate his investigation. Which, you know, you need that kind of stuff if you're a detective and you're having to travel somewhere to interview people, things like that. I mean, of course, you're gonna have to get money from the department to pay for your flight and things just the different little things that you need budget you know so apparently yeah Whitson I can't had money I can as well but someone else was <clears throat> going uh, in other places where they found out more about his life he's supposed to have been linked to uh, nazism and that he was very racist they found yeah. out as well yeah mm -hmm. yeah and um now that those are the okay so yeah going into that is is connecting him to vegas yeah so Whitson was very connected in Vegas. Now, what comes from Vegas is mob ties and ex-military people that have positions within casino, casinos and banks and things like that. Yeah. So, because we all know that you know how how deep if if Whitson was military intelligence if he was CIA how how deep was he was he you know I've read in you know in chaos puts him in Europe chaos puts him in Europe prior to the murders puts him in yeah in Vegas prior to the murders um, and he puts him in and around Los Angeles with the whole you know trying to to break up the culture which was the government's goal right. To set up right, yeah. to make all these groups black panthers the hippie movement the whole counterculture movement to make everybody look bad to, you know, to cancel everybody yeah so whitson's place in all these different facets of the of the government movement well it's weird how many different places he was it seems as well isn't it because he turns up uh, in a dennis hopper a documentary about dennis hopper as well mm -hmm. So he was hanging around with lots of different Hollywood people. So it wasn't just JC bringing Sharon Tate, Roman Polanski that he knew. No, right. Yeah. So Correct. Was, he was at, before the well, right before the, right before in the er, yeah. right mid, early to middle sixties before 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 um before the murders. Correct. Yeah. No. He showed up. I've read somewhere else that he showed up somewhere else. He's, it's just it's weird. Yeah. How many different places he was. Now, oh, yeah, what I found is... what that was interesting today was we all well I don't know if everybody knows this but the C he's mentioned in so Ed after Sanders all... book Sharon Tate Alive as well sorry he's yeah in Ed so Sanders book, Sharon Tate Alive. so what I found today which was pretty interesting was the fact that after World War II the CIA um, made a deal with the Vatican to hide certain SS officers. Um, away from war crimes, from you know being uh, prosecuted for war crimes. In exchange, they gave them the Jew, the Jewish people's um, money that was confiscated yeah. by the Nazis before the, you know, before the war. Um, now, what was interesting that I found today was that. Um, Sidney Korshak, when the um, this this guy Charles Bluedorn, he goes and sets up Golf and Western Incorporated, right? This is the this 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 Bluedorn guy is connected to Antonio Arcardo, the big tuna, a, a, the the Chicago outfits boss, right? Vegas, Vegas, all of that. So this Charles Blue Dorn guy sets up Golf and Western Incorporated, 
which then buys Paramount Pictures. Um, and with, you know, the control of Sidney Korshak, you know, he's the one really looking over everybody. He also, he puts uh, Robert Evans as the production um, chief now for Paramount. So we know that Polanski, and, and I'll get to my whole point here in a second. We know that Polanski, you know, Evans goes and gets Polanski. They become good, they great friends. Um, but what I found interesting was that a, a silent partner that helped purchase um, Paramount was a money launderer, Sindorna, who used the money from the from the mafia's the Vatican money through the mafia. Right. So that that was pretty interesting because of the Vegas connections, and I'm gonna try to see. Because Whitson wasn't spent a lot of time in Vegas, a lot of time. Yeah. So I'm gonna, and of course, there's other other individuals with ex-military intelligence ties and defense who become defense contract defense contractors um, for the military um, in and around Los Angeles as well. So what it looks to me like um, is that it's really highly possible that. Reed Whitson was a uh, defensive contractor yeah, working for yeah, somebody. People said there was that theory that he's uh, he was hired by Abigail Folger's dad, and that's why he was there. But I think, no, he was involved with too many other things. I think, yeah, it was more likely he was doing something. It was, for yeah, it was more. It, yeah. yeah, he leaned. I don't, I don't know if he was working for Folger's dad. He leans mm. more on the other side because he's, he's been yeah, and he, in more he places. Was so close to, Right, right. It was so close to Tate and Polanski and JC bringing all that. It just seems odd, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Now because another it, book. In fact, he's friends with them. Suggests that he's in the coke world as well, though, don't it? Because they're all coke dealers. Like, was he really friends with them, or was he just surveilling them because he was? He was exactly. A... And that's where that's I'm going to start yeah. looking into now is that whole mm. mafia Hollywood Vegas connection mm. because I think um, if I can connect some of these people that are talked about to Whitson then we have something there but he's supposed to get have been really upset isn't he and said that he regretted uh not stopping the murders happening or something like that he felt guilty because he could have prevented the murders and oh and he also stated, right there. He yeah. Said, yeah. Like, yeah. but he also yeah he also <clears throat> has stated that he he went he went up to cielo after the murders mike I know you say you you disagree with people going back up there after the murders, but no, I just he, disagree with Charlie going back up there. Not everybody. Oh, else. okay. Then Whitson has yeah. said he went up there. You know. Oh, um, well, I believe that. I believe that in my heartbeat. I do. Uh, yeah, well, it's especially yeah, because that's what people could have been hearing. Maybe it was the bloody FBI agents. Because you think about it. Because yeah, this is the other like mind blowing <clears> thing <throat> about the um. About, yeah, like recent revelations that I've, I've been thinking about. Well, I've known about the cocaine getting confiscated for years since I read the FBI report. But yeah, oh, yeah, right, exactly. There you that go. That right. must mean that that must mean that, but it just never occurred to me that that must mean that they were surveilling the house. Right. But of course yes, it does, so, doesn't it? If it was only was two a... days before, of course they're going to have been watching that house. So. Right, right. And so that is really I... controversial, isn't it? That, that they where... were watching. Right. Yeah. That's what. That's where this whole thing for me came from. Was the fact that, you know, um, Polanski got a couple of shipments through. This last one, the week of the murders, got confiscated by the FBI, mm. and he was never charged with international drug trafficking, even after yeah, the murders. I mean, he was protected. Name. He was protected by Paramount. Name, yeah. 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 Well, hold on. Remember now, going back <clears> to the <throat> Paramount Studios. At the time, he had successfully made that movie for Paramount, right? And for that, for that successful production of the, what was the name of the movie? Um, I didn't look up his I, I am, I am D file, but um, Robert Rosemary's Evans. Baby. Uh, yeah, I think it was. What yeah. film? A film Polanski made when? Yes. Yeah. So because of the Rosemary's uh, the, Baby. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm thinking multiple things here. Yes, uh, because of the, the success of that movie, Robert Evans gives him the at the at the time the best camera equipment, the best production equipment, all of it, right as a gift, and it, and it goes through the board of directors of that Paramount outlet, which I think because it's on audio and it's in stories and it's written everywhere that <clears throat> Polanski was always running behind budget. It, you know, the time he was allowed to make the movie and the budget that they gave him to make the movie, he was always running behind. Now, there was been a couple of times, in, <clears throat> even for Chinatown, he, he did the same thing with Chinatown. Um, a few, a couple of years later, two, you know, three or four years later, but anyway, um, Evans was like, man, we're gonna get fired if you don't if you don't put this out on this time. We need we know we need to do this like now. So I'm a firm believer that the whole porn thing was was to finance finance through cash off the books, right? All the porn that was going on at the Cielo Drive, and we know it was yeah. happening. We know it's happening. Was was to facilitate the finishing of movies because it, the basically the studio would say you're on your own you're going to finish this but you're going to figure out a way to finish it you got to yeah. use your own money so you know I, i'm a firm believer that's what that's where the porn came in to help you know not only because of their erotic the things they were into but you know it also helped it was also a cash business so and if you bring yeah. It, hold on. yeah it was a cash flow business of course, I mean I've I've read where where people were paying up to like twenty five thousand dollars for a reel of you know of like a famous actor doing porn with another actress or whatever. I mean, you could you could say Sharon Tate, you can say whoever, but yeah, man, I mean, I've I've read up to like twenty five fifty thousand dollars that were being paid in cash for these reels. So, um, you know, so that explains why it was so vital for them oh, to yeah. find them tapes up in the attic at Cielo after the murder? Right. Is, now, that, is that what yeah, you're I mean, tying the, into the, this? That makes yeah, total the, sense. Right. The yeah. bigger picture here, the bigger picture was, remember, Bugs comes into this into this case in the middle, like in the middle of it. He doesn't start the, he is not the, the leading prosecutor right off the bat. He comes in October, November, I don't know the time, but he comes in the middle of this case. So, who was really his employer? It was his job to, to create this this theory of helter skelter to go ahead to go ahead and you know clean up everything? It's very highly possible. Get those tapes, get all this stuff, because because if you ask me from a, from another uh, book that was published that I just read about Chinatown, the way Polanski met Sharon. It was like <clears throat> Polanski didn't really like her at first. He wasn't he didn't want her in his film. He didn't want to do anything with her. Matter of fact, it took like three or four dinners to finally, you know, have a producer and uh, Sharon's agent or his agent for pretty much say, you're going to have to put her in the movie somewhere, put her in the movie. He's like, all right, I'll put her. I'll give her this this. You know, this lead, not the lead, but this. Uh, this role so um and you know and then they start filming the movie and then i guess you know things happen she's into lsd that he likes he likes doing that stuff and sex and all kinds of stuff and then he basically finds a little porn star in her in essence on the side mm -hmm. and that's the reality of it that is the reality of it and they go on again. She was forced they, as they, well. That, that, that there's videos of her being forced to do things as well, isn't there? So whether she was already into it or not, that's the other thing. Yeah. How does well, yeah, Whitson, but, but Whitson you guys, ties yeah. into but this, you right, guys, then? well, yeah. Whitson comes. The Whitson thing is coming back around with his ties to remember to the Vegas. To the Vegas oh, okay. To the, All right. To the mob who ran Vegas, who really was running Paramount <clears throat> Studios. Do you see what I'm? Do you see how I'm putting on? It's like a big old. I do. I'm finally starting to grasp it a little bit. Yes. Yeah. 
Now yeah. is Whitson and Robert Evans in cahoots? I mean, I, is I don't, he I, trying that's where, to stay? That's where I'm. That's where I'm. I don't know. I can't. I'm, okay. I'm just okay. barely getting into that. The yeah. fact that the fact that that I found out today that this Western Golf Company was the one that bought Paramount with that uh, that mob guy who shook hands with Sidney Korshak and they used um, Vatican, you know, money as a silent partner. It's big. Holy, I mean, that's huge, man. Holy crap. It's huge. So, you know, Charlie was all, I've read in different locations. I've read on websites. I've read, not in this, I don't think I read this in a book. I think I read, I read on somebody's website that has, there's, there's tons of people out there that have done really good research and put out on websites and stuff. So I believe I've read where Charlie was even going to Vegas and filming porn there. I mean, I've, that's, that's been, I've read that somewhere and I've read it, that it was a lot of the money was also put in by that woman, that, that uh, mistress he had. I always forget her name. Yeah. What's, the, this what's well, the mistress? This, like, yeah. What's the mistress? They, they that, say, they keep saying there's like several mysterious women that seem to bank for old Charlie. And uh, uh, well, I read recently, all one of the main ones is she tried to help him, you know, yeah, she called the name. ranch. Yeah. Mike, do you know her name? No, this is the first I've heard of this, but it makes sense. Totally no, makes sense. Apparently there were several women and this is the thing I read recently. Uh, and this comes from Alex Constantine and he found one of the secretaries. Uh, no, 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 no. This um, was a, this was a, a girl, a lady that had, that had a, yeah. I don't know. She was rich, man. She bankrolled him. She bought him cars. She hooked him up, and she put him yeah. up in Vegas. She put him up in um, Reno, <clears throat> not oh, Vegas, Reno. That's what I'm talking Reno. about, Reno. Yeah. So and there's then there's she rumor up, as well that um, Charlie uh, Abigail Folger might have given Charlie money as well. Yeah, in the that's another days, rumor too. Yeah, that, that, hey, that's a, it, yeah. Yep. And a lot of people we, didn't we would, didn't believe that, but the more I'm looking into this situation up, uh, uh, Charlene Caffritz, is that the there one? You Charlene go. Caffritz, yeah. That's yep. her. That's the one. Yeah, she Thank was, you, Sam. She uh yeah, she bankrolled I'm just gonna make, Charlie. I'm just going to make another cup of tea. I won't be long. Yeah, she bankrolled Charlie on trips to Reno, possible trips to Vegas to film porn. I read that. <sighs> And then, and then I, I, I didn't website, think Charlie. I don't, would, I don't remember yeah. how. I don't know. I don't know whose website, but somebody. Like I said, there's there's a lots of people out there that have done research and they've you know they blogged about it and all kinds of stuff. So I've read that before. Yeah. So um, Evans gets Polanski to direct Chinatown. So well, it's funny is the second thing was that the party never stopped when they finally convinced him to to be the director of this film they hook they hook him up you know in la with a house and all that kind of stuff right well the party never stops between evans um so, yeah, so he died and uh, so jack nicholson uh, and jack nicholson they had girls coming over. They had cocaine everywhere. They had cash everywhere. They were filming shit. They were probably filming porn. I mean, the party really never stopped. And this was like 1972, 1973, as they were filming Chinatown. Well, it's at Jack Nicholson's house that Roman Polanski's raped the 13 year old that he's. Uh, right. Yeah, that was, that was in what, 1977. Right. Yeah, remember I showed you that about the tunnels? I'd always heard that they found the plans for the tunnels, but the tunnels had never been built. But actually, there was a tunnel from Jack Nicholson's house and Warren Beatty's house to the Playboy Mansion. Yep. And another so, dude, another actor. So, man, you could be um, talking about sex trade, all that stuff going on, man. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? But Jack Nicholson's got to his all of this as well, and he's just got away with everything. But like, well. you know, but back around to Wits, you know, Wits, Bree Whitson, was he a uh, contractor, a military contractor? Was he an actual CIA asset? <clears throat> he had a lot of cash all the time. And what, I'm going to try to figure out, I'm going to try to figure out. Oh, is Sam on there? Is Sam, is Sam, yeah, Sam, yeah, Sam, can you see, Sam, can you see the I, uh, I, I, Sam, I proved, I'm sorry, I proved, um, 
Karate Day, the military valor was there. But and I'm sure he went through the ranch and he just went through the ranch and he probably showed showed the family some some uh, combative techniques with shooting and knifing. Um, but no, his his background was never in the, was never in law enforcement. Yeah. So I already told her I, I don't I don't I've never posted, but I've told this guy's him. a mystery. He's a complete and total mystery. A drifter. He just shows up. <laughs> Somewhere up top, somebody big is hiring this guy. No doubt. Who, Whitson? Yes. Well, shit, man. He's been around. He's been apparently. Uh, O'Neill found stuff about him in Europe. I mean, he. Yeah. He, well, I don't. I mean, you know, Europe. He's got yeah, quite a dossier uh, after the murders too. I mean, he was involved in some pretty shitty stuff. Um, that, that, that people sense, were posting right? underneath it. Oh, Sorry, okay. someone's just said this on, on the chat. Uh, they have an article from the Free Press paper. It states that something like Angelica Houston was caught doing cocaine and they didn't want her to take the fall. So Roman Polanski said he would take the fall for having sex with this underage girl. But what's that got to do mm. with Angelica Houston doing cocaine? I don't know about yeah, that. That's, 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 that, that doesn't that make teenager. sense. Yeah, why would he yeah, say he had sex with her? I was like, going to help out Jennifer Houston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that teenager, that teenager, man, she was raped. Yeah. I mean, you know, she went forward. And, yeah, and yeah, she wasn't. She was it, people have made out they that did she a was whole, maybe up for it or whatever, but no, it turns out she you really can only, wasn't. Really you, can only, you can only do so much. You can only protect a person so much. Um, if yeah. you go that route, eventually, you know, I mean, you know, if there's strong evidence and they can, they can't hide it. Yeah, they're gonna have to prosecute. Yeah, and that's what happened. So I'm not. And, and yeah, I mean, maybe that actress, whoever you just named, was doing blow. Sure, everybody was doing blow, man. I mean, Jack Nicholson would had a bowl of it on, or had a amount of it on the dining or on the uh, entry table when you walked in the house, just right, just sitting there. I mean, you just took a line and. When you came in and you took a line when you walked out, just what it was. So the actors doing cocaine wasn't a big deal. Everybody was doing it. You just couldn't get caught with it. Oh, boy. What a mess. But I'm going to, man, you got to give me like, give me about two or three months. If I can connect this Chicago outfit, LA Hollywood thing with to Reeve. Then we got something. I think we've got something now. Well, it uh, we just can't. I mean, he, you know, O'Neill put that he stayed. He was there, right? The night, or he went back after the murders. But what was the extent of his investigation? Why was he following the? You know, why was he there? That's what we're trying to figure out. Well, I mean, the the proof the proof that states to me that he was there is when he sat there and said he felt horrible that he didn't do anything to stop it. And if, well, that yeah, is a direct quote, if that is a direct quote from Reeve Whitson, then we, I, this guy went to his grave knowing so much more yep. than we'll ever know. Yeah. And Colonel Tate apparently, apparently in his last years might have known the reason, but he just didn't want to tell Neil. He was just too distraught over everything. Here we go. No, no she no. got caught with cocaine yeah. and Roman said he would take the fall by saying he had sex with with the center age girl, I'm assuming that means underage girl. I wish I could post the article on the site, but I can't. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I knew that. Doesn't I mean, make sense. I, knew that that girl, I never knew that. So. that well, yeah, the How actress was there. saying that he had sex with an underage girl. Help, she Angelica was there. Houston. She was, the, was, the, actress, was the actress was there. The girl yeah. tells her mom what happens. Police show up yeah. with a warrant, right? Just like I've been saying. They had cocaine everywhere. It was just around. They just had it on the table. They had it just around. Yeah. So when police show up, detectives show up to question Polanski about the incident with the girl, with the teenager. Yeah. I think she was 13. You yeah. know, they have a warrant. They're going to go in. They don't. They cannot say, okay, you can leave now. They had to question her. They had to look through the house. They found cocaine. They found this. They found that. Back in what you year know? is that? What? 1977. Uh, okay, I was gonna say because cocaine didn't become like a rage that late in the '60s. That was a '70s drug. It was 1977. So, okay, not that that matters, but I was just wondering what year we're talking about here. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't even think the actress got in trouble. 
They, they were there. They weren't there for her. They were there for Polanski. They weren't there for her. They were there to arrest him. Man, they arrested him. They arrested Polanski and they took him. Yeah, we, we saw did. that, Sam. I definitely saw that. What? He did. What did Sam say? Which there's a short cameo in Dennis Hopper's movie, American Dreamer. We got to watch that movie. Yeah, yeah. It probably oh, I, never seen I remember it. telling you about it last month. They, 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 yeah, never they seen talked it. about it on Shrek's yeah. page. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this to me right now. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're talking about Whitson and putting all that. To me, was this this uh, purchase of Paramount? Holy oh. crap! That was. Um. And remember, just <clears throat> was Wit see who was Witsy working for? That's my biggest question right there. Who was he? Nobody really for? ever knew. They just knew he had cash on him all the time. You know, he he talked about his connections to different people. Yeah. How did Tom O'Neill dig all this up? Did he have to? Did he get it? <laughs> Twenty years of his life. I mean, no. I, I oh, mean, oh. I know that. Oh. I'm just saying. What did he get? Like, get the subpoena? Did he, did he have special he, uh, clearance? His dad, well, his dad's a lawyer. His dad's uh, a lawyer. So his dad's a lawyer. Yeah. Which yeah, his, his name is mentioned in the trial as well. Apparently, he just doesn't say it in Helta Skelter. He just doesn't right. mention him in Helta Skelter. Now, but he is, he does actually come up in the trial. So. Yeah, I mean, his dad read all the trial transcripts. You would have seen his name. No, but he's asking how he does get. To, he was able to get some of this information. How O'Neill you know, was his, able to get it? Yeah, yeah, his dad's a lawyer, so he gave him the heads up on what to do. And he spoke to and, Tate, didn't he, Colonel Tate? Yeah, and he he threw the Freedom yeah. of Information Act. But you have to follow the right. You got to know what you're doing. You you need just not only a normal person. You got to fill out that information correctly. Oh. Yeah. This is another thing. So in chaos, O'Neill puts down that every all these agencies, the FBI, the D, well, the DEA wasn't around. The DEA wasn't didn't get didn't start until 1974. But he asked the FBI, DEA, who else did he ask? DOD, Department of Defense. Uh, God, who asked somebody else? But anyway. They, everybody told him no. They've never heard of Reed Whitson, except the CIA. The CIA's answer was, well, we can say no, but we can't say yes. So their yeah. answer was wishy-washy. So I just wanted to give someone a look. Someone said about this picture, how weird this picture of him looks. Yeah, and everyone says this. He looks like an undercover Danny in this picture. He doesn't look very convincing. But apparently from the the background of this picture is that he, he's not just about to go out on an undercover operation. He's just dressed up. This is taken by someone he knew, one of his friends. And he's just showing them what he would look like in the hippie clothes. And I reckon that's a wig as well. Somewhere else on the page, there's a picture. So... What, what his natural hair that doesn't look like his real hair to me, either. So, ba yeah, so basically, the CIA is saying, Well, um, I can't say yes, but I can't say yeah. no. That's more like what he actually looked like. <laughs> so, Mike, <laughs> basically, the CIA is yeah, saying, he had, he had short hair. Maybe he was, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm letting you guys run with this. I'm learning from you guys. So. Yeah, but the the backstory to that picture where he looks like a knock is just because he's a, he he was just put he put on the clothes for someone to show. That's definitely the same face. For like that. a joke. That yeah, is he looks yeah, like Jim Morrison. I, mean. I thought it was that Jim Morrison like, when yeah, I first. That is, that is the dude. I know. That that dude, I thought he was going for the Jim Morrison look, man. Because I saw a picture. What had happened was I saw a picture. I was just doing sick member. In order and really to understand this case, you got to really understand the decade, man, and maybe even some of the 50s. You got to understand the political realm, you got to understand uh, Hollywood, you got to look into the Vietnam War, all kinds of stuff in order to really grasp the whole picture. This is a very difficult case. Um, so when I, I was researching the 60s, right, just looking at just looking at pictures of how people dressed what was whatever right so i you know of course the doors come up right and i'm seeing a picture of of um the doors taking some pictures in in venice at venice in venice beach and um 
I'm familiar with the area because I've been going to Los Angeles for like 20 something years. It's like my second home, but uh, something, okay, cool, you know? <laughs> and then I look at, and I'm somehow, I'm looking at Reed, Reed Witts, and I'm like, what the f I'm like, he literally looks like like Jim Morrison in that photo shoot. So I'm like, I'm like, was Ree Whitson going for the for the uh, the uh, the um, Jim yeah, Morrison the popular look? look back then? Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I just saw, dude. He looks he looks just like the photo shoot. I'm like, he was going for the Jim Morrison look. I just thought it was hilarious. It's still haunting me the most about this is. I could have done something to stop it, and I didn't. I feel bad. Well, he does become That's a disgruntled staying person. With me. A lot of people that work for the government end up becoming disgruntled with their employer for various reasons. But, um, yeah, he became a disgruntled employee, saying, talking a little shit about CIA and government. But, um, Nancy, you said that Reeve Whitson was mentioned in Helder Skelter, or that he was left out of no, Helder no, Skelter. Julio, he's left, out. He, he's yeah, left, he out, left of out of Skelter, but he's mentioned at the trial. Okay. He's mentioned at the trial because he strung armed the photographer into talking at the trial, didn't he? So he's That's mentioned. Right. Yeah, yeah, with a forty-five. Don't forget yeah, that yeah. he pulled the pistol out on him. Don't forget the pistol, <laughs> yeah, yeah. man. You gotta I say the pistol. You won't let me forget it. Yeah, because yeah, I will. Well, yeah, so he strong armed me. Like, he didn't just say, "Hey, buddy." Let me pull you over here to the side, and uh, you just follow these rules. Hell no. He put him on the yeah. side, shoved him against the wall, threatened him, so and, put the, 45, and put, put the 45 yeah. on him. That's a different story yeah. than just having a conversation in an empty room. That's a whole different yeah. thing there. Yeah. And then how would – I was telling Mike this. How would a U.S. Uh, – not a U.S. A, – a district attorney let some stranger walk in and around the offices – and with an illegal weapon, you know, if that weapon is not registered. Wait, wait, that wait, wait, does that make friendly. sense to you? <laughs> no. It, does, it doesn't make sense to me that he's friends with JC bringing Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate. Oh, that's these a, yeah, well, that's, that's, where, the that's where the studio, hold on. That's where I'm getting at. I'm going to have to research the studio, right? Because that, be that would be a possible connection. The studio. But then at the same time, he's working for Budiosi by strong arming guys into speaking, right. trial, exactly. and shit like that yep. for him. It's like so he does seem yeah like some kind of undercover, doesn't he? He's good not cop, just, bad cop. Yeah. They call yeah. that. Yep. 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 Yeah. So who is? Let's he talk about for? the shots. Okay, go ahead. All right. What I presented to you, I think it was well. It couldn't have been two nights ago. I was in no condition to do that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> To go. Um, I was just going by the police report that there were several different people that heard gunshots and it all ranges all right y'all in the same hour range between 1240 and 140. Now what I think that some people might be getting confused about with the 3 a.m. gunshots are is that yeah. is the time that the final officer at the precinct processed it. Was it 3 a.m.? And also, it. and also, there's a guy who has dogs that are hunting dogs that yes, don't react yes, to I normal noise. Yeah, but, the dogs, but the dogs bark at 3 a.m., so no one else hears shots. I think Nancy had it down. I think she read it somewhere. But too. yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, that's, that's in the whole So that's confusing me. I'm Nancy's not saying. going to talk for me on this one because she. I'm, she I'm, like, no, one had, no one heard bullets, but these dogs that would normally react only to gunshots start reacting. And that no. same guy, that's another crazy thing as well, that same guy said that he was concerned about a lavender dune buggy and uh, <laughs> a Triton motorbike in the area dude. for the, over the past six a weeks. A buggy at night? Up, up there at night, Nancy? No, no, he was just saying it had been in the area for two oh, weeks okay, in, okay. in the early hours of the morning. He didn't say that he saw it the night of the murders, but he said that he's been concerned about the presence of this June buggy all through the night and in the early hours. Yeah, of the it's morning. taxing the girls, I'm telling you. They but were no, there no, the June the buggy, get this, get this. Someone posted a picture, and guess who's got a lavender June buggy? Oh, yeah. Do that Mama the Cass. Yeah, that was Cass crazy. Elliot. Cass Elliot some, has some the lavender June buggy. posted that picture. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Where you, I wanted to ask her where she got it from. I've never seen that. Yeah, picture. and then just just as just as I had posted down below that someone was looking, someone had reported there had been a lavender dune buggy in the area for two weeks. Diane posted this picture of Mama Cass in a lavender dune buggy. Yeah, so Mama Cass somebody, is the one somebody with the lavender was saying, buggy. 
Yeah, somebody was saying, was she dealing yeah. for them too? I mean, who knows? Who knows? That was really good. That was a good. That was a great picture. Yeah. There's rumors going around that she saw the bodies first. I don't think she went up there. I don't know. Well, that's it. Well, there's people saying she would have. Um, she would have this... thrown up all the sandwich meat she ate that night. Stop. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think she. Dude, I don't think she. I don't think she makes but it past. She, the, I don't think she that. makes it past Perrin in the car. There's no, dude. There's no fucking way. No way. She well, couldn't stomach when, that. When she, no when way. she got there, she'd have seen um, Jay Sebring still on the porch as well because she'd have got there before the bodies got moved around. <laughs> so I think she'd have just drove off. When yes, she saw Nancy. Jay good call. On the porch You're right. As well. But, um, yeah, because we haven't done the part two of the blood splatter yet, is there? But trust me, there's plenty, yeah, plenty, I don't of, think she had, plenty like of evidence I said, she, that, that Jay Sebring been... actually died on the porch and then his body was moved. Yeah, so you say the just... bodies were moved. So Sharon Tate did actually die in the living room. It looks like from the blood evidence. Yeah, but there's dude, some blood outside, suggesting she was outside when they started. You your her brains out. out. She would have walked up on that. Scene. You think Sharon got outside, yeah. Nancy? Yeah, I think they were both yeah. outside because there's there's a big next to the bush. There's like a splatter of Sharon's blood, as if she's been cut, and then they've dragged her back inside. And there was blood on the trunks and all that going down the corridor, weren't they? So they pulled her back in, and then. She's died. If you look at the floor underneath her body, there's a lot of blood. So I think she actually did die. So that's where she finally hemorrhaged yeah. the most. And her, yeah, that's, that it, that's where they okay. finally stabbed her and she died. I, I mean, Jay, Jay Sebring, the there, board, wasn't, yeah. there wasn't a lot of blood under Jay Sebring's body where he lay. And there's a big pool of his blood right on the porch, which suggests that he actually died on the porch and got left there and then got moved later. Hmm. And that's and so that's why his body looks so uh, out of um, place and strength as well. Yeah, I mean, so that's like, why yeah, I always believe like there, it's the people who went back up there at four a.m. because at four a.m. a kid hears these people arguing loudly yep. and it freaks him out so much he shuts his window and goes to sleep. Now, real quick, when okay, real quick, quick question: Where what, at what time was the vo the male voice? It was probably Sebring. Going, please, no, please, or whatever he was saying. But everyone's always assumed that's Perrin, that aren't they? He, he says, yeah, oh, God, oh, God, God, when God was please, that? no, 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 Hold no, on, no. I gotta pull it up here. You gotta find it, yeah. <sighs> oh, no, please, or something like 20. God, no, please, God, no. There you go. That's what the quote was. 9951 Beverly Grove Drive. Somebody by the name of Emmett Steele heard between 2 and 3 a.m. Ooh, no, that's, no, that's oh, yeah, because that's that's Ooh, the guy. That's, that's the late. guy that's that's, that's the guy late. that's the security at the kids' don't summer camp. Me. That's later than twelve thirty. Well, I got it wrong. Hold on, hold on. I no, got it wrong. It don't famous. don't get a boner yet. I got it wrong. <laughs> I know. I, don't, I wrote all these down. Oh, okay, while you look for it, Nancy, I have a question. No, I am yeah. right. That was it. Beverly Grove Drive, Emmett Steele. At what awoken time again? by the hunt no wait Emmett Steele was the one Tim Ireland. by the hunting dogs between two and three a.m. Yeah, and even this, even this is all out with what he says in Helter Skelter, right? This is Tim Ireland, one of the five counselors supervising a sleep out for seventy male and female children at the Westlake School for Girls, located yeah. seven hundred north facing road which down the hill, directly to the south of the Polanski residence. Between one AM and one thirty, right, bearing in mind that the family are supposed to be away and hosing themselves off by one AM. Right, Mr. Island was awake, alert, and watching the sleeping children. He heard a male voice from what seemed to him a long distance away to the north or northeast shout, "Oh God, no! Stop, stop! Oh God, no! Don't!" Island said, and that scream persisted for approximately ten seconds. Nancy, you got that, it right. That's the guy I was looking for, Mr. Ireland. Yeah, Tim Island, Tim Island, and this is guy. And he was so concerned that he got out and he drove around the area trying to find the source of the screams. But this guy gets mentioned in *How to Skill as well. Yeah, but I've read that. Thing. One and one thirty hours, and this is when apparently, according to the official narrative, um, they're gone. The family have gone by one one a.m. They're down washing, hosing themselves off in the guy's garden. Emmett Steele, yeah, point three seven miles away from Cielo House, mm. and his dog started barking between two and three a.m. Now, as we read yeah. this, are they talking about the West Coast two to three a.m.? Whoever wrote yeah, that out? No, they're just they're just this the same time the the same West Coast. So they're time. using Pacific time. Okay. Right. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Pacific time. Yes. Yeah. So do you see All how? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's why I always told you there was possible a shootout up there. 
Well, a shootout means when the, when guns are firing back and forth. Well, yeah, but you, I, I guarantee you, you're shooting I guarantee a dead body. You the police, the police did not go and look for bullet casings all over the. There, there's a, it's a big land. Those detectives, remember, I saw that video. Those detectives roping themselves up the up the embankment. You know, right. what were they looking for? We don't know what they were looking for. Were they looking for bullet cases? Were they looking for possible somebody tossing a gun? We don't know. It. We don't know what they were looking for. Beckham, when, you, they, when you explain to me about a shootout, to me, in my mind, a shootout means two sides firing back and forth. Well, it could like have been one, War, one side okay? shooting somebody, you know. And men, Are you and talking you, shootout as in they're finishing off an already dead body and they want to shoot him again? Is that That's what you're possible. talking about? Yeah. Just, okay. Um, all right. Shots were fired. That's my point. It's a waste of artillery to me, but all right. Well, yeah, so okay. went back up there and shot. Mm -hmm. The guy shouting, oh, God, no, as well. Everyone's assumed that that's Stephen Parent, but that's at 1 a.m., so it's way too late for it to be Stephen Parent. And I always assume that that is well, um, that's a, that's JC bringing we... outside. Because mm -hmm. uh, because of the way the blood splattered outside, it suggests that um, they were J C. Bring and Sharon were outside. Possibly they go into the car to go to J C. Bring's to get drugs to placate the family to give them money. So all this happened away. later than what they're saying. In other words, See, yeah. And Sha I reckon read. Sharon's tried to run, and Jay has seen them start cutting Sharon, and that's when he shouted, "No, no! Oh my God! Stop! Stop! Stop!" Because mm -hmm. he's seen them start cutting Sharon, and because he started shouting, that's when they shoot him. Yeah, this is the, the guy heard that. The guy heard a male yeah, voice shouting, oh, no, yeah. stop, stop, right. God, no, yes. stop. I right. reckon he's, 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 it's because he's seen them start cutting up Sharon. And so then yep. because he started shouting, they've, sh they've shot I'll him and they've that. started stabbing him. Mm -hmm. And then I'll he's fallen on the porch and they've dragged Sharon back indoors to torture her more and possibly to try and get more money out of her. So I bet they now, don't now believe Now that you mention it like that, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, that's, um, that's just my theory and what that sound at one between one and one thirty. See, see what Robin wrote down there mm. where she says that they mm. had shot or killed, stabbed Sharon and Jay. They tied up mm. the other two and left and came back between three and four and killed the other two. I mean, that's possible. What's the yeah. autopsy say on long, like on how long they were dead? I don't know, man. I, that's a thing. Yes, it doesn't give you time of death on them as yeah, well. Yeah, it doesn't, and, it doesn't really give you very specified information. No, specified and Jay's, information. Jay's it gives autopsy, the, they never checked the him wounds. for amphetamines and weird shit like that. So yeah. Jay's, well, so, Jay's toxicology I was, was all of. I was surprised when I when I read over Jay's that um, and well, I mean, I just was. I don't. It wasn't. It's probably not a big deal. But he was stabbed more times in the back than the front. Yeah. So let me get let me understand this. There's a possibility that they weren't all dead when the first crew yes. left, and then the second crew yes. came up and finished them yep. off. Yep, because I yeah. think they were. If anything, they went to go f to the Sebring's house to figure out if they were if he, if that's where where he was keeping the money and the drugs. Uh huh. Yeah. Now yeah. you might had, be opening up Pandora's box in that brain. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that that's why that's they. Possible. I, I think it's possible they were being tortured and then they left and came back and finished them off. But, you know, I don't know. But you want to be as quick as possible when you're doing shit like this. Well, you what if you're trying to, what if, the, right, but hold on a second. But what if you're, you're there for a specified reason, a shipment, right, that came from where? This is my theory. The shipment that was coming that got confiscated by the FBI that same week. What if Tex Watson and Marsaro and Rasta all got wind of it? And they're yeah. like, well, fuck, Sebring's getting this big shipment. Let's go rob him. A three-way okay? battle. So, mm -hmm. so they're like, well, fuck, we got to go rob them, right? This big shipment's coming in. And then they show up to steal a drive because that's where Sebring's at because they cut the fucking his wires the week before and they cased his house yeah. and his dungeon room is ain't working right. His lighting <laughs> system ain't working right. So he's dungeon hanging out with Sharon, right? Yeah. So... So then, you know, they're like, where the fuck is the money and the drugs, dude? And he's like, man, I don't know, you know, the whole movie bit. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Boom. They start slashing people or whatever. Right. The dungeon. So, right. so, I mean, then, you know, they're going to torture him for a little bit oh, yeah, and try Chase, to get it out of him. Like but, but in reality, That's he wasn't, but hold on, but check this out. In reality, Sebring, if that happened, Sebring wasn't lying because the FBI had it. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Now, 
what comes back around to that is that there was two cleaning crews. Remember the days after the murders, you had McQueen sending people to uh, Sebring's house based on the butler telling the police this. You had two different times where two different women and McQueen was sitting out watching this happen down the street. They went and spent like 30 minutes to an hour in and around his office in his bedroom there at the house and the butler just let him in. And they were basically doing cleanup job, taking whatever names, drugs, whatever, information, drugs, whatever, right? Because I'm sure McQueen probably knew where shit was. And then on the, on the flip side, when Polanski comes home, you have Paramount, you have Paramount, uh, Robert Evans, Polanski, and Jack Nicholson helping him clean up shit up with the porn and everything on the back end. Because Polanski couldn't get there, and I mean, he got there like a few days after. So Jack Nicholson went up there. So you had, quick after yeah, what happened, didn't he, as well? But that's yes. after the so police. So you had had two left, cleanup clean teams. Up. You had you had Sebring's cleanup team, and you had you had um, uh, Polanski's. Okay. So what if they knew of this drugs and money coming in, and they, you know, they were gonna go rob them for it? But Sebring was telling the truth because the FBI had confiscated it. And we know that based on the FBI documents proves that. So weren't they, they waiting for another shipment of drugs that night besides the one that got confiscated? Well, uh, well, see, well, may, well, maybe, I don't know, because remember, the, the Sebring, that's right, Sebring, Sebring was trying to get drugs from, from Rostow. I mean, Rostow they, were, was like, they, yeah, were dressed, I'll, I'll they were dressed I'll on the come. couch. Right. Yeah, because Rostow was like, I'll come back and give you some or something, and he never showed up. Oh. Maybe all, all that was a ploy. That's a possibility. Awesome. That was a ploy. Yeah, it was a ploy. I I Ross, I was like, possible. yeah, man, I'll hook you up later. And he never shows up. And, and except he tells Tex, Tex gets the girls and get everybody ready, and then go and do what they do. That seems more plausible to me than anything, really. I think well. they were tortured. I think they were tortured. That's my opinion. I don't think it was at all a quick thing. Parent was probably quick because he probably saw them being tortured and said, yeah. what the fuck? Oh, no, think, and he I went think. for a run. He went to run and then they caught him, you know, and then they killed him pretty quick. Well, I think I think that they probably killed uh, uh, Fukowski and Abigail quickly as well because I think they, they right. were the ones. That yeah, I think so. Too. I think they might have been torturing the Sharon. They yeah, might have been torturing Sharon, Sharon and, and, C, and uh, They would have kept alive to torture because they would right. have, 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 I, That's have my personal to opinion. Money, they? The this is all my the personal opinion, stuff. but, you know, I, I, nobody no, nobody knows. Yeah. You know, everybody can come up with their own theory. Well, at some point, she's tried to run, uh, and that's when uh, it's all gone wrong and they've started yeah. to kill. That's so, why they brought so out the ropes, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, no, she was probably already tied up by then, and like I say, I reckon they yeah, were probably right. torturing her in front of um, Jay in order to get him to react, you know, to get him to, you know. Oh, yeah, Robin. Submit. Porn was a big thing. Porn, I don't know if you were listening earlier, but, yeah, uh, Polanski um, was always behind on his movies all the time, and he pissed the shit out of the board of directors at Paramount, and there was no excuse he had to finish the movie. He had to figure out a way if when he was he, when he ran out of the budget. So um, Robert Evans and him probably came up with the idea to do the porn. And um, they had access to the Paramount students after dark to film porn. So they had to, it was a cash flow. It was a cash flow business. And that's how they were, you know, Polanski was getting anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars a movie. So um, there you go. And then you have the whole cleanup job afterwards. This is a big ass case, dude. This is a crazy ass case. Crazy ass case. So are we gonna blow my entire save a brother thing? Should I just um, go home no. and walk my dog and take my no, ball because, and go play No, because else? I think no, because I think you probably get the girls to come around to come along if it's a robbery. Yeah, the, I think the girls believe. Yeah, that. they probably just the sold the girls on the idea. Yeah, it's not, hey, yeah, hey, this could. Yeah. We need this money. You know, we need to go rob him. You know, whatever, and we can get Bobby out too. Remember, we can get yeah. out Bobby too. You got to forget the word yeah, too. Yeah. They might have included that in with getting drug money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, talking about casing uh, Jay Sebring's place. 
earlier in the week. Didn't somebody in the comments section on our page last week kind of shoot that down that there is no actual proof anywhere that his house was cased or, or uh, the well, wires I mean, cut? The wires were cut. I mean, that, that was uh, Did, is, that, is there any and Rothstyle's MO and apparently Tex was hanging out with Rothstyle a lot months before the murder. So but is there any proof that Jay Sebring's wires were cut? Yeah, dude, there's, a there's a whole interview. There's a whole audio well. interview of his electrician going on record I'm saying not talking that he about was, on paper, like in, a, in any kind of police uh, reports or anything like that. That's all I'm, I mean. I'm not sure, but there's audio okay. of it because I've heard. And I'm going to file that the, under the he said, she said department. And the electrician was was saying that Sebring, when he figured out that the wires were jacked up, he called the electrician. There's a young guy. I mean, he's like 20, <clears throat> 21 years old or something like that, young dude. And he was like, man, I can't come out, man. I'm on a date. I have yeah. a date. And, and uh, you know, he couldn't go. About the film set, and and so, then, well, um, uh, look, there's this thing about uh, Yul Brenner and Peter Sellers and Jane Fonda and Warren Beatty and Mama Cass, and they're all doing the films. Yeah, it's yep. the porno. And the interesting thing about that is there's a film called The Magic Christian that um, Roman, mm -hmm. Roman Polanski appears in. He doesn't direct it, he just appears in it. And he appears in it in the same, in the same scene as Yul Brenner. And Peter Sellers is also in this film. Yeah, well, there was a all three of those men together at, at certain yeah. points. So it shows that they all would have at least met each other. Yep. Because they were all um, in this film together at the same time. Yes, well, and there was, there was a specialized um, also, Hollywood a, power a, group that, that was making that. this porn. So if they made a lot of people that are not no 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 one saw them. They were privately sold. They were sold for like right. twenty five thousand dollars each, weren't they? Yeah, for the for the real. It wasn't something that was public. It was private. You know. Yeah, there's your answer sales. on uh, on the uh, yeah. the testimony. But I've heard, Sam, I've heard mm. somewhere audio where yeah he's talking about the he asked you know he Sebring called him up that that middle of the day close to evening he was. He's like, can I come tomorrow or the next day? Because I'm on, I'm on a date, and he didn't go. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it was. I've proven. got to read the um, second homicide report all the way through. I haven't yet, as well. But I wonder, yeah. Did anybody cool. take any pictures of Sebring's house of the of the shit getting jacked up there? Do we have any pictures of no, that? No, no. Damn it. No, Nobody has no. pictures of, of McQueen sitting outside his house while he's. Living Somebody would have taken pictures out. if they. Somebody would have taken pictures over at Sebring's if wires were cut. They would have wanted that for the investigation. That's just that, how I well, think anyway. I, right, Mike. There's probably, Mike, there's a thousand pictures of this investigation. We don't know who has some. I'm, I'm sure. I'm just wondering if any of those oh, no. particular yeah. ones have ever surfaced. I'm not I'm saying it didn't that, happen, guys. Oh, I'm not okay. saying I'm it saying didn't happen. Oh, okay. I, I just, yeah. There's no pictures. In this book as well, they say that uh, Steve McQueen uh, behaved really strangely at J.C. Brings' funeral. Was that just something weird happened at J.C. Brings' funeral and the way Steve? Well, yeah, because he was. They, they didn't know who had killed everybody. No, right, he was no, scared. A guy walked in uh, wearing a, a black hood. Or I don't know if he was wearing a black hood, but he, he, he stood next to Sebring's coffin. He was packing heat. And started chanting. Now listen to this. Yeah, listen to this. A guy walked in, and started chanting over Sebring's coffin. And Steve McQueen pulled out a gun and pointed it at the bloke, and someone manhandled the bloke out of the out of the funeral. And it's like, what? Yeah, the, no one fucking here. took the gun off Steve McQueen. Did no one go, hey, mate? We're at a funeral. Maybe you shouldn't be waving a firearm around you, lunatic. But no, but like someone yeah, dude, drags the bloke scared. out. The bloke, the bloke that had freaked out Steve McQueen just got dragged out. No one tried to take the gun off Steve McQueen. Everybody you know, was freaking out. Him, he, was a, he was a bit of a weird guy. He was a, yeah, he was a bit of a Guys, you got to understand these murders yeah, were so yeah, yeah. horrific. They were so savage. Nobody had ever – people were hearing rumors. People were hearing yeah. that nipples were cut off, that balls mm. were cut off from the men. I mean, people were so the hearing baby all was cut out. Of, the rumor Yeah, the baby was baby cut, out. cut out. I mean, these to, – in today's time, the, these murders would be like, ah. Eh, you know, nah, no big deal. We see that shit all the time now with the cartels and shit like that nowadays. And now you now you see yeah. schools being shot up, right? So we've yeah. been this, you know, we, we've seen so much nowadays that people back then had no, I had never seen anything like this before. And then plus the rumors that were going around, people were horrified, absolutely horrified. Yeah. So I often I often talk about. If this was a modern day crime, the killers would have been like videoing themselves doing this. Probably. It. That's oh, how yeah. stupid people are these days. Yeah. 
for yeah. sure, man. For sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I made a joke on podcast the other night. Uh, nobody really paid attention to it, but I said, if the, the Manson murders were done <laughs> in these times, I'm sure the girls would have been on TikTok videoing it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sad, but true. You notice a lot of so young the people criminals. that went back to the crime scene would be TikToking themselves, standing over JC Brings exactly. body, going, hey, look oh, at this, man. Sam. <laughs> Hold on. Sam brings up a good point. Holy shit, I forgot about that, Sam. You're right. I've heard the same thing that a snuff film was made at Cielo Drive. Holy shit, that's right. Somebody went too far and they killed somebody. Oh, oh, that's, all right, that's, so, that's, so not of the actual murders then, not they were filming the murders. Happening. No, they filmed, they killed somebody during a porno scene. That's what a shit, another film thing. Is. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. And one of the Rothschilds owned Cielo Drive at one no, point it was, as well. And it was, no, it was at Cielo, yeah. Sam Smith, yeah, he's right. I've I've heard that before too. It was at Cielo Drive that they filmed a snuff film. Now, if somebody would, okay, hold on. So everything we've talked about tonight, okay, everything, the porn, the money, the cash, yeah. a snuff film probably would have probably come. I mean, you're getting twenty five, fifty thousand for like threesomes and weird shit, right? I mean, a snuff film, fuck, man. Somebody would have probably paid a shit yes, ton of money saying, for Yes, that. no, it is said that they filmed the murders or the aftermath, so there was footage of the bodies or the footage of some some of them being murdered. Yeah. They were actually filming the CLA Drive crime. No, uh, I don't believe that. Well, no, 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 no. Below like zero. Below zero. Yeah. yeah, it was a snuff film, not the, not the yeah. murders, no. Well, not the um, actual murders, but yeah, I can believe that oh, maybe shit. someone if went somebody had seen that shit, shit no, you would have you, you yeah. needed the reel and the camera, and that's too much, too much equipment. <clears throat> we don't have, you have cell phones nowadays. Guys, those yeah, cameras were pretty big back lighting, then. It would put, yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't have had no lighting, <laughs> you would have had, you had a big ass camera, yeah. you can't even, you, the weight of 150, 100 pounds, there's no way you could be carrying that shit around. Speaking yeah. of acting. Do you, do you understand how much this case has paved the way for people now, the way they act in their mug shots, the way they act when they're in court? Nobody ever did that crap until Charlie and the girls, they like set the bar for people to like smile in front of the camera when they're arrested, to smile when they're in court, to so they were, act they up became, the way they did. Nobody yeah, they ever did stars. that before this. Now everybody does it because I think they all go back to that. That set a precedence for all this shit. Do yeah. you agree? Yeah, they were the they were they became superstars. I mean, the media and, turned and, them and into yeah, the media into turned well, them into think, that was. I think but yeah. that's what Bigliosi wanted. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to give the attention away from the every, victims on the, the, the real them, yes. the reality of what really was happening at Cielo Drive. And also the Vietnam War and stuff like that, it was a good distraction from all that, wasn't it? Because that wasn't yeah, going well true. for Nixon that's, and, that's and true. all the government. Yep. You know? So it's a distraction to everyone mm -hmm. over the shit like that, isn't it? The stuff wasn't going well for Nixon and all that, was it? And the counterculture was showing up. Mike, I told the, you. The Mike. government as well by protesting against the Vietnam War. So they needed Remember the counterculture to be heard. I, I've told Mike how Hollywood and CIA yeah. have always worked together for ideas on TV, on movies and shit like that, right? Mike, I've told you one of my favorite movies was was uh, was um, with uh, Lethal Weapon, right? Now, if you go back and watch Lethal Weapon, oh, I have. <laughs> it deal it deals with times. hold on. It deals with special forces. It deals with it deals with military intelligence. It deals with special forces guys. It deals with LAPD. It deals with the cocaine trade, and it deals with pornography. Gee, I wonder where they got that idea from. And guys dying on toilets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean, brother. I do. I do. Well, we've been going over an hour now, so we might as well start to wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Nancy, yeah. Beckham, and all of our guests tonight. We have uh, scratched the surface a little bit on Reeve Whitson. Um, yeah. I did not believe that that post would get so much uh, leg underneath it, but it did. And I appreciate yeah, all the comments. Good. Robin Wir Virgil, is that how you say your name? You did an extraordinary good amount of work. Thank you. Yeah, Sam, um, thanks for bringing up some good stuff, too. That I, I just caught yeah. Sam and, and, uh, uh, and Ann. Thank and you, Sam, Sam and as always. And Ann, Ann's in the room. Hello, Ann. Yeah. Um, I can't Robin. see the chat, so. 
Yeah, me either. No, no, I can't people see. Said stay. Well, if, if people have still got stuff to say, we'll, we'll, we'll now, carry remember, on. I was just I'm just now hilarious. scratching the surface um, with. Yeah. I'm just now scratching the surface with Hollywood, and yeah. Reed Whitson. If I can, if I can tie names together, then we got something. I'm maybe O'Neill's already ahead There's of everybody. A lot of people didn't but, join till later. We've actually got four people watching us now. There weren't people yeah. here until. So some people have only just got here. I got a recast. You'll be able, you'll be able to watch it on um, uh, the playback. Replay. Yeah. Are we gonna uh, are we gonna have a replay of this, Nancy? You yeah. Gonna keep well, it up. I'll, okay. Good. Yeah, I'll keep it up. And what I'll probably do is because this was a good one, I'll download it and I will upload it to the YouTube channel. Yeah, but Could keep it on our page too, right? Yeah, yeah we'll like keep this? it on stage. But yeah, okay. but we'll put All it because right. Reeve Woodson, because there's obviously interest in him, isn't there? So it's worth. Sharing the information. Mm -hmm. I think we've pretty much got into this hour, haven't we? Everything that we've found out about him. And what we're hoping to do is have Nancy continue with her blood map. Um, she's very good at that. So we will probably sooner or later in the month try and get to that. But this has been such a hot topic, y'all, that I think that we needed to scratch the surface a little bit. Yes, Mike, you need to it, you know? Mike, well, real quick, Mike, you need to get your hands on, on, on chaos. And just as I think last week, um, there was a new podcast that had O'Neill. Um, yeah, you you sent it to me. I watched. Yeah, refresh. It. Yeah, refreshed. Yeah. And he's talking about new ideas, and he's talking and new about book. different things, and possibly a new book that he's got new information that he wants he's to. He's got put enough. Out. He's got enough yeah. for a new book now, but he wants even more. So that tells me there's more of this, more of this shit storm going on than we'll ever know. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are we going to wrap this up? Yep. All right, guys. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you. Yeah, you find it. Yeah, thanks. You'll find Thank it you, Manson Family Mystique. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.